Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about a small minimum kit. Uh, I was approached by a young man who runs a channel out of central Alaska that's uh, Alaska Frontier One, and I'll put the name here. And he asked, could we do a little collaboration and a little bit of, you know, talking back and forth, and we've been discussing things. And one of the things we were talking about was kits. What's your minimum type survival kit or carry kit or whatever? What would I consider and what would he consider the minimum kit? Well, this is about as opposed as you can get because I live in the deep south where summers are brutally hot and humid. He lives in Alaska, which can get hot as well, but he has 24-hour sunlight during the summer. I have 12-hour days of daylight at the height, and that gradually peters on down a little. But we have radically different weather. And so, in that mindset, the obvious question was what we would consider necessary in our environment. What gear would I consider a minimum pack or minimum kit in my environment? And I came up with this bag. Now, we're going to go through the contents here in a minute. I'm going to lay it out. What is this bag? You're going to ask that, I know. This, as I understand it, is a British medic bag. Okay? And it accordions out. And I will show it to you in just a minute. I got this from a bushcrafter channel over in uh, the UK called uh, Stone Age Bushcraft. Uh, Mike Dixon. And probably 10 years ago. He and I did a trade for a book I had in my collection and this pouch. And it became a pouch that went into my bug out bag as part of a emergency small kit to pull out. So I went, after talking to the young man in Alaska, I went back through this to line up what I think would be minimum in my environment. So this is a summer, let me stress that again, summer in the deep south kit. Now in addition to this, there's going to be a canteen set. Hydration is is a gotta down here guys. And with this set I'm also carrying a canteen cup, canteen stove, a lid for it. I have little patches on the side that's got some spices and stuff and I got some water purification tabs up here in this front pouch as well as having the ability to boil water, purify water, etc. The knife I'm carrying in this little bit of kit is my WC Knives NK, and I'll give you an up close on this, and this is one of the early ones. Um, why I chose something small like this? I know people are going to ask, Blackie, why didn't you take your bigger knife, whatever. Smallest compact kit. Um, another excellent choice would have been the WC uh, SK, which I have which is my usual go-to knife in my bug out bag for that purpose. But for this kit, we want to scale it down to what was to be the dead minimum you would have in a small survival kit. And so this is it. Now let me adjust the camera where you can see it better and I'll lay all the contents out and then we'll come back and talk some more. Okay, here is the pouch. We'll go over that in one moment. Let's start with the knife up close. This is my WC NK knife. Now, to me, this is the perfect little small knife for doing 10,002 jobs. I can do shelter building with this. I can do all kinds of bushcraft with this. I can process game with this, etc. If I had to pick one small light knife, this would be my favorite, and it is my favorite to grab because there's so many things that I can do with this small knife. And now I know you're going to ask about one out of saw and whatever. Well, I do carry a saw to some degree. For another blade, I'm going to be toting my Swiss Army uh, Victorinox Fieldmaster. And it does come with a good saw on it, which has been perfect for doing notches. And I can easily just go around and score a tree kind of deeply with it and then snap the tree off if I needed to harvest something that big. Most of the time down here in my woods, picking up dead stuff on the ground 
will easily take care of what I need to do in shelter building. There'll be dead limbs or whatever that I can easily snap off by hand. And there'll be no need for me to go into big major construction to set up a, a temporary shelter. As well as having two other blades, can opener and other tools in here. So this is my multi-tool basically. And this is my all big knife job that this is going to handle. Okay. Next, carried on my person all the time is an Olight flashlight. And this one has multiple settings all the way up to a thousand looms as well as a low setting that's like five looms. I can get it low enough. And therefore it is a good pocket flashlight. It's rechargeable so I carry it with me all the time. So if I'm carrying that in some sort of situation you can bet this is on me. I would use it very sparingly and I can get several days use out of it by not having to use it all the time. Okay? Now, the cook kit. I call it that because it's a complete system unto itself. And I do I have videos where I've covered my canteen set. This is a Nalgene a canteen bottle. In here is a canteen cup, lid, and canteen stove. And the forward pouch on this side is various spices and folded up aluminum foil. There's a big piece of aluminum foil folded up in the bottom. And then on this side is my water purification tabs and a few other things like aspirin in case of whatever. So this would serve as my basic hydration kit. And I've got a lot of experience when using this to gather water, boil water, purify water with that, this will get me out of whatever the problem is. I can cook, I can boil, I can do whatever I need to do. I can even dig with this canteen cup if I got to. And so therefore, I have a good system set up that I've got a lot of experience with. Now, the pouch. This would be considered my absolute minimum gear set that I would pick if I was going to you're going to drop me in an unknown situation and I've got to take no more than absolutely bare bones. This is the bare bones. Okay? Now the pouch unsnaps and it's got Velcro. So it opens up into three pockets. In the big main pocket up here, first thing up is a donut of 550 paracord cordage. This has got all the inner lines in it. This will handle all my cordage needs. This is probably... I think it's about 50 to 70 feet of paracord. With, then with all the internal lines I can pull out for lighter duty and etc. If I was going to set up a shelter, I'd take about 10 feet of it, cut it off, then pull out the inner lines and use those to set up the shelter. So i got plenty of line right there. Pulled right out of the top. Here is one of the military issues. Electrolyte, basically Gatorade pouches. This is necessity because if I'm in a very hot environment in summer, you're going to be sweating a lot. So staying heat di uh, hydrated is a vital component. And having some electrolytes and all over, I can add back in, maybe not in the first day, maybe not in the second. But having it where I can get a sugar boost and get this back could be vital to try to keep me going. Okay. Next is this pouch. Inside of it, I have a complete nylon mesh hammock with 550 cord slap straps to put it up on a tree. It just uses two cabiners to hook it. This allows me to set up a shelter quickly. It also allows me to have maximum usage. When you open this up, it is a big mesh net with large openings. This can be strung between two poles and put into a stream as a gill net. I go upstream and go to beating on the water and herd fish back to it so they have to try to force their way through the net. Catch fish that way. I can use this as camouflage. Drape it over something and throw leaves and stuff over it. Instant blind. It gets me up off the ground because here in my environment it's a big thing to get off the ground. There's all kinds of ants stuff that bite. We got all kinds of stinging insects. The ground just moves down here during the summer. And staying on the ground for any amount of time, you're going to be covered with something. So getting me off the ground is a big advantage. Next in here, we're going to pull out an SOS emergency double bivy sack. Now this is just a big um, emergency space blanket 
designed to go around two people. This gives me plenty of room. I can use this as a shelter or I can use this as a wrap around me. Either one. Next, I have a sil nylon poncho set up with cord inside of it. There are no tent stakes, but I can easily generate tent stakes on the fly down here. But that is a almost full-size nylon poncho I got off of eBay years ago based on the military pattern and it weighs very little and allows me to have a tarp to set up as well as rain gear. This will serve as rain gear because it is a full functioning poncho. So I have a way to sleep. I have rain gear and the ability to uh, make a shelter. I can use the reflective quality of this to put it with the shiny side up. Big advantage down here to reflect heat. It's not hard to get into shade down here because we're just in the middle of all the forest. But the ability to have a reflector for heat could be a big lifesaver in, in cases like that. So that's like sleep system, hammock to sleep in, poncho cover, and cordage to do it. I will generate my tent stakes. I have an emergency space blanket. This can be used for uh, putting a dressings onto wounds. It can be used for signaling. It can be used as a reflector. And it's very easy to make a uh, waterproof shelter with one of these. It's easy to build a lean-to. It's difficult to build a lean-to that's waterproof. So you take this and make that as your roof. I generate the lean-to design, putting sticks close together. And then I open this across the top of it and anchor it. Then I just pile debris on top of it, like pine straw and other things. And this keeps me from getting wet in a downpour. So it's an additional shelter in addition to this, in addition to this. It can also be a clear, uh, dry place to sit on the ground to sit on, or etc. I can open it up and utilize it at that time. That's everything in the main bag. In the next pouch right here, I have one main from a USMRE folded up and stuck in there. I rotate these in and out over time. So this is one meal that I'm carrying with me. Also in here is a group of flavored pouches uh, for uh, Lemonade and stuff like that to add beverage powders to add to my canteen cup to make something to drink. Keeps you from drinking that same old tasting water all the time. And then, because I'm not a barbarian, roll of toilet paper. This is handy for several different things as a fire starter and etc. Okay, and then in the bottom pouch down here, this is my fire kit for this. Here I have one of those Yukio match sets that still has the tender in the lid and all the big lifeboat matches. It's got the additional striker inside of it to protect it. O-ring so it seals up well. I have a nice big ferro rod in here that recently I did in the video and showed you why I resurfaced it. So now it throws a really good shower of sparks. This will be my primary fire maker. Use this if everything's wet. And then, here in this pouch, this is a first aid kit. Inside of it is all kinds of band-aids, gauze, medicines, and things like that that I would need in an emergency. All packed and put in here as tight as possible to give me a good functioning first aid kit. I'm probably going to be injured if I have to use this. So I have duct tape on the outside of it. I have gauze and stuff on the inside for up to four inch square to handle larger wounds. I'll tear up shirts and stuff to make slings or whatever or fabricate other things as long as I've got this with me. So that is my basic kit right there. It is covering I have the ability to get off the ground. This works as a quick chair. This works as a, as a food gathering. This works as something to gather large bundles of firewood and tote back to an area. It's in a nice red pouch that can be used for signaling. I have a poncho for utilizing as a shelter and for rain gear. I have a pouch of basically Gatorade because in my heat I need this. I have multiple type of cordage there that I can utilize for multiple purposes. I have a space blanket for multiple extra uses that I haven't thought of but I may need such plastic or whatever for. 
I have a lot of beverage powders just to keep the monotony to a minimum. I have a large space blanket for use for me to keep as a warmth and to be as an emergency shelter if I need to. I have one MRE main meal in there and this is something that's very heavy dense. I think this one is, if I'm correct, it is Mexican style chili, uh, Mexican style chicken and something. So it's going to be heavy and dense and a lot of calories. I have two kinds of fire making ability right there. I have a first aid kit with a supply of duct tape. That is my basic kit. Okay, so that's my kit. It's often very enlightening to see things from a different point of view. Now, the young man points out in Alaska, he doesn't have a flashlight in his. Well, he doesn't need it because he's near about 24-hour day daylight, and so he doesn't need a flashlight. But as I showed, I carry a flashlight, and I also carry a Swiss Army knife, which has a small saw on it. And as I pointed out, making a fire and things like that is easy for me down here. Building a shelter, I've got beyond abundant resources everywhere. Building a shelter is super simple because you can just about stick your arm straight out. You could grab a thick wad of uh, small trees together, and there's plenty of those. Get in the middle and just start removing and bend the tops over and put that uh, poncho up top, and you got a shelter, you know. Sling your hammock up. you got a shelter. It's simply where your environment is. Down here, it's going to be a big thing with mosquitoes. It's going to be a big thing with water. And it's going to be hydration is the number one thing. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Hope it gives you some enlightenment. We may collaborate in the future and do like a fall set or a winter set or a spring set together to show you how things change because... I'm in an environment, like I said, that's, you know, eight months of warm and four months of cold. Well, he's in an environment that's exactly opposite, eight or so months of cold with four months of warm. And so it's different things are needed in different environments. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button before you go. And thank you very much for supporting my channel. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.